So, good morning everybody out there in Facebook land. Interesting how Facebook has given us the option to use AI within embedded into their prompts of what you want to talk about to help you write better and all that, which is actually really cool. That's really awesome. <laughs> And so, yeah, the uh, last couple of days has been very aggressive. The sun was shining so brightly the last couple of days, and it's going to get warmer. I mean, it's going to get warmer, and then it's going to get really cold again. So the last couple of days, I had the hives. It was so insane. I had the hives. And when you have the hives, I know others out there are developing fast-moving growths, I, I, or they're getting deleted faster. Well, the same thing. Because when you develop fast moving growths and you know what is growing and you're not releasing, yeah, that's a faster delete process and also a faster accumulation of certain cells that are staying stuck in the body and turns into something that people have to get carved out. And holy shit. And so when you see the growths on your body, like the hives, I call them growths because they are growths. They, they, they appear and then disappear. Oh, and they itch. I'll tell you, the last couple of days, I when I'm waiting for packages from the mail, finally that package came. But uh, I really wanted to take a nap yesterday, but I couldn't because I had to wait for the fucking mail, and I was just, like, miserable. And I threw myself in the shower yet again after pooping a lot and just make sure everything is out because I'm telling you, I had to get that stuff out because I was feeling like, holy crap. I was I, the, the, the best thing that I'm dealing with right now is the bloatedness. That's the best symptom that I'm dealing with. Bloatedness, a little fatigue, but not that much when you think about it. And just feeling like like itchy because of the hives. It's the growth. And again, you can't you don't know where these growths come from or what they are. You don't know if you picked them up recently or you've held them inside and another algorithm frequency woke it up. I'm just gonna say I'm gonna make a logic I'm gonna use a certain logic that no matter what, you're out there in the community, you're always going to be picking up stuff that your body is going to fight to regulate. And if that if that entity out there is stronger than your body, mind and spirit, it will be so fast moving that you can't get ahead of it. And that's why you really have to understand your immune system and the release process and the food process to make sure you're keeping that balance. Because you'll never know what you pick up when you go to the grocery store. I don't care how many masks you wear or don't wear. I don't care how many things you think you need to take to calm down the the replication by starting over again by taking another antibiotic, developing yet another offspring. I don't care how many things you take out there. When you are in mixed company, when you are outside and the wind blows so extraordinarily, like over there in San Diego, which is so uncharacteristic of a tornado warning, when those winds whip up and those particles accelerate so extraordinary, <laughs> you're going to be breathing in some kind of antigen. I don't care what it is. You're going to be breathing something in when you're around animals. I have animals in the backyard that are like squirrels. That I actually asked my husband to buy me some apples because the, the squirrels like the apples. He didn't buy because he doesn't want a bunch of animals. But but I know, yeah, okay, if I want to have little pets <laughs> in my backyard, I'll just put little raisins and little apples. So they And, and they actually ha held the, the apple in its hand. My husband and I actually watched this the other day. And they were eating the apple. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so great. So I, I'll be even like inhaling squirrel antigen. Like, you can't get away from antigen. But obviously, if you're in mixed company on a continuous basis, you're going to be taking in antigen almost like a direct inject. Obviously, if you're having sex with different people or you're in a closed in space breathing in the thick ectoplasm, you're taking in antigen. And that antigen will have the choice. Well, it won't have a choice. You will have the choice whether or not you host it and keep it and then to have it turn into something that works against you or release it. And sometimes the release process is aggressive. And so yesterday, everything, my whole front was all full of hives. And I'm just like, oh my God. But that's the worst of it. And I I, I would be hungry, you know, and, and, and I'll eat some food, nothing extraordinary. 
I mean, I I noticed that a couple of years ago, I was eating so many oranges, like tangerines, tangellos, like every single night. And then after that, it would be the milk or the ice cream sandwiches every single night. And then after that would be like, um, what would it be every night? Maybe cheese sticks and oatmeal. Then I would go into this oatmeal cake every single night. Now it's like I'm eating spaghetti almost every single day with meat sauce. My husband's like, how do you eat the same food every single freaking day? Because sometimes it's necessary. When I was PMSing a long time ago, when I would be at home, and then maybe I didn't even have Top Ramen, because I'd actually be able to afford more than Top Ramen if I was, you know, home alone um, when I was single and, you know, a roommate or in a little apartment. And so I would eat like a half a pound of spaghetti. And so even now, so now in this environment, which is so interesting, I'm eating spaghetti almost every day to keep up with the energy. You need spaghetti. Spaghetti, it's carbs. It's gluten. My body knows what it needs. And right now I'm on a spaghetti kick. <laughs> and I'm eating spaghetti almost every single day. I ate the leftover prime rib and some of the potatoes, but I'm not really feeling the potatoes, but it's the spaghetti and the meat sauce. And I'd have a little bit of my birthday cake and I'd pour a little mango juice on it to give it more because it, it you know, a little bit of strawberries. It, it was still a little bit dry even with the cream the whipped cream, so I poured a little mango juice, and yeah, it's yummy, okay? And that's how I'm supporting these hives. And then I have to release, and I'm going to tell you, sometimes you're like, oh, my God, you know, I'm waiting for this package, and it's going to come any time, and I have to go poop, and, and oh, my gosh, and you're just like, I wish I could just get off the toilet and go wait for this package so it doesn't <laughs> sit there if it's there. And But, you know, sometimes it's just it's annoying, but it, it's necessary. In this environment, oh, my gosh, you know, you got to make the time to release because if you don't, well, yeah, you'll get bigger, bigger, bigger. Like I felt like I was getting bloated -er and bloated -er, and I know it's not a word, but I'm making it up. I was getting bigger and bigger, bigger. So, so bloated. <sighs> and, and also the feelings of an increased energetic levels. Remember on Monday, I was just feeling it and you could, you could see what was manifesting in me as I was typing. If you look a few posts back and I'm just saying, oh my God, you know what really pisses me off is scammers and people who fall for scams, uh, <laughs> you know, and, and that was the aggressive energy that people use drugs, people use cannabis, people use downers to go and try to calm down. Well, this environment is highly caffeinated, highly stimulated, highly ionic, and it's causing, yes, rapid replication of people. It's causing rapid deletions in people. That rapid growth is actually causing the the rapid delete in people, causing cancer and growth to, to metastasize. And so with that growth, with that, that energy, with that suffering from those hives came then another fucking epiphany. Because remember, whenever you take a side, like you've known that I have been bagging and bagging and, and completely ripping another asshole on all the cannabis users out there. Oh, I'm sure I, and I know I've offended so many people and I, and I'm fine with that because you, because that is necessary on my end to really understand one side. So then at some point when the universe allows me to finally see the other side of it, because it takes a minute to see the other point of view, then when you see the other point of view, then you're like, holy shit. Then now you have the permission. I have the permission to take neutrality and also explain why people are freaking drug users, especially in America. But again, I have to go through the suffering and the growth and even coming off like a fucking judgmental, you know, religious person, because that's sometimes how religious people come off is really judgmental. And I get it. Okay. I, I've been there, done that, so I can't fault you for it. So you have to come off like a judgmental religious person in order to, to to lay that groundwork and have people hate you, and that's fine, and deal with that suffering that you're willing to speak your mind and put it out there because the environment is just like forcing you to be, basically let it all hang out. And then when you see both sides, then when you see both sides, and you finally, it finally can see that side, and then you get another suffering of the growth, and you see the other side, then you're like, holy crap, there is a reason why... The, the the cannabis is so prolific back in the 1960s. Why drugs were so prolific back in the 1960s, and even so much more in 1930s. You think about where Einstein came from. 
they were using uh, so many different speed them up, fast forward, you know, uh, amphetamized type of things way back in, in Einstein days in the 1800s, 1700s. I mean, you can only imagine if the opium wars were like in the 1860s and the 1780s, like the Middle Ages, the opium wars, and you have Genghis Khan, and you have the, the whole silver, what is it, uh, Silk Road, and all that drug trade, and the, and the, the what is it, the Indian Company, <laughs> I'm just thinking of things off the top of my head, the British stuff, and the Chinese stuff, and India, and all that trade, the spice trade, the drug trade, and all that, and people are using amphetamines to speed things up, then you figure out, oh, Imhotep, back in 2600 BC, such a smart kid, and before 20, he's inventing stuff, he's doing stuff, he's, he's an alchemist, he's the first doctor, he's an architect, he's a, a chemist, he's all these different things, and you can only imagine that, of course, pot had to exist back in 2600 BC to calm down people's brains, because they were being enslaved through their brain to develop things. And of course, people get entrenched. See, the danger of speeding up people's brains to make them smarter, okay, is that then they get not only entrenched and angry and, 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 and deadly, but also um, <sighs> tipping it to the other side where then they become dumb. And so that's the thing. Why is autism so prolific? You can't even say, you can't even blame it on one thing. People want to blame it on the V's, and I get where they're coming from on that. But it's the innovation. Autism comes from overstimulation. I don't even want to say oversexualization because that's a context, but overstimulation of the brain. Overstimulation. When you're overstimulated, people feel anxiety. Like I felt on Monday, so overstimulated with the amount of foreign particles from whatever I picked up because of just you're in a diverse world and then the environment heating up so aggressively, the barometric pressure rising so fast and it's becoming warmer and it's going to drop really fast too. Next week, we're going to have another polar vortex. That's another died suddenly situation. That's another diagnosis when the barometric pressures rise and fall so extremely fast. But with that said, with the barometric pressures rising and falling, and people are dropping like flies, absolutely. You're getting fast-moving cancers, diagnosis at the yin-yang, maybe even some epiphanies. You're seeing them all over YouTube. I, I'm watching right now, like, while I'm sleeping, and when I wake up and then I go back to sleep again, I'm listening to those who are now exposing the the Chris Watts case with a Nicole Kessinger and you you and I'm listening to this one guy that like every day like me he goes on there and that's how he has channeled his energy he is fixated on the Chris Watts case and and picking apart why is it that they had not asked Nicole Kessinger right the mistress uh, all the questions they need to ask to then pin to then pin her also as an accomplice in that whole situation and so I'm watching, I'm here and listening to all these different YouTube influencers now picking apart the Chris Watts case. And I'm like, and this, and this one lady who was collaboration with this guy, she's like, you're on every single day. I can't keep up with you. And I'm just like, dude, I understand exactly what she means. And I understand like, exactly where he's coming from because he's on every single day channeling his energy, his aggressive energy into this. And so, yeah. Holy crap, that, that, that's the, uh, when you're so intimate, overstimulated, holy shit, you have to channel that energy into something. And then you watch what people are channeling their energy into. So go onto your Facebook and look at what people are channeling their energy into. Their family, their friends, their politics, their religion, their science. And you're seeing me channel my energy into figuring out how to survive this and pick apart why it is that we have so many drug addicts, so many people who are suffering and pick apart my own background, and then pick apart then uh, then all the different sides that people take, and then how do you come from one side or the other, understand the other side, and then go to a point of neutrality so you can save yourself. Because that will be the key to saving yourself is when you come from a point of neutrality, and that happens in layers, because you've watched me go through it.
because what you believe what was what you believe at the time you think the chemtrails you think the the the, the gmo you think the v's are the enemy and you're staying in that and you're staying in that and then one day you're gonna look at their side and be like oh wait it's not just the v's it's the diverse company it's not just the v's it's my lack of nutrition it's not just the v's it's my malnutrition it's my lack of tolerance and so when you're able to do that layer by layer everything that you've taken a side on you are now opening yourself up because of whatever reason to understand the other point of view at some point at some point everything you've taken a side on and you understand the other side then you come from a point of neutrality then you realize it's time to save yourself there's no point in taking a side one side or the other it's time to save yourself and so when you are resisting what other people say believe and do then you cannot see what their points are you are still in your biases okay so when I notice I'm resisting all the cannabis users out there and I'm being judgmental as fuck absolutely I will admit it absolutely I'll be judgmental as fuck I, I, leave, I even know when I'm taking a, a point of view against those who are anti-Israel considering that I came from a Jewish household that had the Holocaust rammed down her throat okay so I understood that okay so I'm taking that point of view and I'm getting mad at all the anti-Israel people and then, I, and then finally, the last couple of weeks, I've been watching their pages again, and they're saying anti this, anti that, pro Palestine, and I'm like, ah, oh, yeah. and then I'm like, I'm not really that affected because I'm like, you know what? Now that I'm stepping away from taking a side for Israel, and I understand where they're coming from as far as pro Palestine, I'm still not playing both any of those sides. It's not my war, but I understand where they're coming from. Death, death is sucks. And who knows who started, who is playing what, who's playing, you know, who's wearing costumes and playing. You don't know anything. If, if you understood what happened with 9-11, the other stories besides the, the official story, you don't know anything. You don't know who started what, when, why, and where. It doesn't even matter way back when who was the beginning. It matters is what games are people playing today and you have no idea who the players are and who's behind the costumes, who's behind the outfits, who's... What people's intentions are, you have no idea. So then you have to stay out of it. It's not your war. Okay? So, so yeah, so I'm noticing that when I'm resisting what people say, believe, and do, then you cannot see their points are you're still in your biases. And I saw that for myself when people were touting the anti-Israel memes or pro-Palestine memes. Knowing where I came from, it was very difficult for me to see their points of view, especially when I know the Israeli national anthem. And I even sung it on Facebook, okay? So you see the authenticity the authenticity of where I was coming from as far as my biases. Even though, yeah, I played in the whole, you know, let's question Israel thing many years ago, and even my mom got kind of pissed off and called me a little bit anti-SEMI. And I wasn't, I, she didn't call me that, but she was saying, why are you mixing with these anti-SEMITI or whatever? And I'm just like, I, I'm just, you know, just exploring everything. The the H-O-L-O-C-A-U-S-T-D-E-N-I-A-R-S's, the deniers of the H-O-L-O, -O, I, I wasn't denying it. People are like, oh, it's not as many people, as, not many people as people think as far as the deaths. And I'm like, it doesn't even matter. Death is death. 6,000,600. It's still not appropriate to have that kind of death. So now I see the points of view, but I stay out of conflicts of taking sides because it is not my war. It is their war, and if the world court must step in, let them. But even I had trouble seeing other points of view because of my own background and what I was raised in. Now I see the validity of both sides. And I can legit, legit claim Switzerland. Neutral. It is not my fight to fight. It is not the sides, I mean, to take on, to take. Because, yeah, I mean, I understand people who are Israeli and have people in Israel and they're, and they're, they're, they're still hostages. I get why you'd be upset. And I understand if you are, you know, Palestinian and you came here to America because you're tired of getting bombed because of the conflicts and you don't know where it started. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And you're here in America and you're pissed off that your family is getting screwed, getting, you know, destroyed. I understand that. I guess that's your war. It's not my war. So I don't, I, I can't take a side because there's no, I have nobody specifically in those regions. And if I did, it's not my war. I'm here in America. I can't fight their fight. They either have to get out or go fight. Okay, so I, I have to then take a neutral side like Switzerland and let the world court. So now, and now I'm going through the timeline, my timeline from the last video. Okay, so you understand the succession of 
from one thought process to another. So people don't like George Soros. Okay, now I've been in the conspiracy world, the right wing world, and people who are anti-Israel world, and they hate George Soros. They hate where he comes from. They hate that he's an economist. They hate how much he is educated. And considering that when you're so used to a certain way and, and you want things to stay the same, you want to keep making money, you want the economy to be this way, you want to be able to make as much money and, and have the best life as possible. And some people are just starting out and they haven't had a chance to make all this money. And when the economy changes and they're not ready for it because their predecessors made so much money and they were allowed to make the same amount of money because of this, 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 or because of the corruption, all right, then they get mad at the economists who are trying to balance out everything. At some point, when, when, when something is too lopsided going this way or that way, somebody has to go and tip the scales and, and, and balance them out. And sometimes people are affected and then they're not allowed to make the amount of money that they expect to make or certain industries dry up because of whatever. And so they blame it on, yes, people like George Soros, who, yes, is an economist and who had to learn how to balance a budget, figure it out through history that you can't have too much on one side. And so he has to come off as a bad guy, but he did, ha he did have a quote here that I, you know, that I shared and it says formal education will make you a living. Okay. So yeah, you could be a stockbroker and play the market and play that stuff. A formal education, you know, you could be an English major or a historian or a scientist or anything like that. And yeah, you can go make a living and go play, you know, tout the bandwidth, tout the, the, the party line, whatever, but self-education will make you a fortune. Okay. So you're here in Ohio, right? Ohio, you don't have Stanford university. Yeah. You have Ohio state, you have Kent state, you have the Cleveland clinic. Okay. So you have a little bit of advanced education out here, but it's not like, you know, where I'm at. Yeah. There's Ohio state, but where I live, I mean, I don't live in, in, in like North Canton. I don't live in the higher socio areas. I live in middle, like, you know, I would say the ghetto, but a little bit above the ghetto type of thing. But, um, but even those, you know, that, that aren't, aren't being groomed for anything specific. I don't want to say that you can self-educate because you have to figure out what the hell you're educating yourself in and why and what you're going to do, but also do you have the body to educate yourself? What do you mean by that? <laughs> People are coming in at a deficit. If you were to tell me that I could educate myself by using the internet or reading encyclopedias or whatever way back when, and I'm lacking meat, milk, cheese, and eggs and, and sugar and salt and lacking the tolerance for sickness and I'm overly medicated, overly stimulated, maybe sexualized, I mean, yeah, you could say, well, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. If you don't have the capacity to educate yourself, if you don't have the body to support this brain to give you that capacity to educate yourself, then even though George Soros is correct, we have many people who are in such deficit, they couldn't self-educate. They'd have to have someone tell them what to do, what to think, what to say. And so what he, who is he reaching? He's reaching those that understand about self-education. He under, he, he's reached, because there's those who are resisting George Soros want someone to tell them that, that they can do this and don't want someone to tell them they can't do that. So despite that, the fact the system's like, well, you can't make these kind of claims. And even though you might experience something, you can't make these kind of claims. I realize that there are certain rules and laws to live within that even though I can't make these claims out there and save the fucking world. I could still represent and give some people hope. Other people will resist me and that's fine. But I can still give some people hope that maybe they might have a chance to figure it out if they, if all the conditions are right in their world and they support their brain and their body correctly with all food and release, proper release. And even that's all relative. And, I, you know, you have to look at what I've done and what, if you can do what I'm doing and I, don't, I couldn't tell you. So, you know, yeah. So that's his whole thing is that, He's trying to reach those who understand about self-education. Not everything has to be told to you or not everything you have to resist. And as it happens when people want someone to tell, wants the system, wants to, uh, the system to tell them what to do is that they'll also resist what the system tells them. Resistance is no different than someone that has to go and ask mommy and daddy for permission. Resistance 
is asking people for permission. Can I think this way? Oh, I'm not going to think this way. You, you, when you resist someone or when you follow someone to such an extent where you worship the ground they walk on, it's like a child. Children resist and children follow in lockstep. Now, how many children are out there? Oh, there's so many. So I said, right on, George. How many of you think he is shit? How many of you think I am shit? Yeah, you were told stories on, or you hate hearing another point of view shitting on evolution. Is that his fault? Is that my fault? Nope, you had, you hold yourself back by shitting on evolution. It's easy to regurgitate a professor. People do all the fucking time. They regurgitate their friends, their family, their mommy and daddy, right? It's hard to think beyond your prior professors, your prior, you know, uh, worship, whatever, your prior pastors, your prior professors, your prior parents, your prior gurus. It's easy to hate educated people and economists who have to balance the economy and people's greed. It's very difficult to understand their point of view, especially when you've been radicalized against evolution and change, and especially for the last 12 years. You know how many people that I've been around since since 2012 that haven't really changed? I mean, they have, maybe they have, I don't know how much, they, but what I see on their Facebook, they haven't changed that much. It's still the same thing, anti-chemtrails and resist the new world order and here eat organic and all foods poisonous except for my food, my organic food, right? And I'm like, I've been around you since 2012. I've been around you since 2012. And the, the party line still has not changed in your world. That's a huge red flag. When you've been around the same people for the last 12 years in the same arguments and their arguments have not changed worth a fucking damn. You know why? Because they're stuck in their biases. They don't have any energy to convert. So they're stuck in that programming. They're like a statue. Statues don't change. Statues are like staying the same day in and day out until the environment crumbles them. Like you've seen them out there, right? Statues that have been left in the elements, buildings left in the elements. They don't change, but the environment is just deteriorating them. That's a lot of people on your Facebook are statues and the environment is deteriorating them. And so um, it's very easy to be so biased on one side that you topple your own body, mind and spirit. See, I go back and forth to all the points of view. And at the end of the day, I sleep by myself. I think by myself. And I have to live with myself, with whatever belief systems and choices that I've made. Okay? So even though I might go out there and look at all the different points of view, no matter what other people say and do and what the system is doing, you still have to sleep by yourself. Even if you sleep with someone, you're still in your body. They can't, they can't fight the microbial battles that you're going to have to fight at 12 o'clock midnight or 3 o'clock in the morning. People don't even survive the night sometimes. And so someone dies in, in someone's arms, right? And overnight or in the bed. So even though you're sleeping with people, you're still by yourself. I think by myself and I have to live with myself. And so you are being a, you are being a, you're being given a gift that even the Jews back in World War II were not given. <laughs> I didn't put given, but that's okay. You are given the gift of choice. You have a choice in every single matter. If your choices end up in dying suddenly, it's time to work backwards to those who have survived their friends who are dying suddenly and work backwards and look at all your belief systems and who you fell for, who you followed, who you worshipped. So when you see people in the chemtrails world or in the anti-V world and they're dying suddenly, well... If you didn't take a V, like like you were like against, and they took a V, and, and 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 you're like, well, what the hell do they do? Why are they dying suddenly? Oh, it's it's the shedding. Well, yeah, you're subject to the same thing. You're subject to people shedding around you. So even when you work backwards, what are you focusing on? But anyways, it's time to work backwards and look at all your belief systems and who you fell for, right? It's time to take a look at who you have been and are. If you can't see the choices you have made, you have made ended up to be where you are today, suffering and miserable and on one side and selling people diet regimes and supplements and activisms, maybe you are truly full of shit, full of some old programming that the body is dying to release and what you have trapped within is looping. Okay? And so, yeah, if you can't see the choices, 
that you've made that ended up in your suffering, ended up in your cancer disease, chronic illness, and autoimmune disorders, selling people diet regimes and supplements and all your activism and politics, religion, science, and all that, then you are truly full of the shit of the old programming that the body is dying to release. And every single time you self-medicate, you're trapping those things inside or developing new ones that will be converted into the same thing that you have been dealing with. That's the thing about energy conversion is that even when you try to, 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 to pave over it, right? Try to paint over it. The original, whatever that programming that you haven't released will come through at some point. You peel back the paint. Oh, you're looking at the old paint. It's, it's like putting those, those DMV stickers on top of, of the ones that for the last five years, eventually it's all going to fall off because you got, you didn't get rid of the original sticker that was on your license plate. I've seen like in California, people that have so many stickers, you see that the, from each year, you see the rainbow of stickers and eventually that six sticker becomes so bloated and so like big and it's, it's not, it's not even sticking to the actual license plate, it's sticking to the other stickers, then it falls off because it just, it, it, it's lost its, its influence. It doesn't have that, that stickiness anymore. <laughs> Okay, so staying alive despite everything working against you is a fortune and it's priceless. So thanks, Mr. Soros. Oh, I'll tell you, I've released some real radicalized people the last few years when I'm focusing on stuff that may have been supported even Soros many years ago. And then these people like who are anti-Soros were like, stay in the jelly juice world. Get away from the world of Mr. Soros. Stay in your jelly juice world. And, uh, and oh my God, those are some really, wow. Uh, like major radicalized people. And when you're that radicalized, you're dangerous. You're dangerous. And so, yeah, it really sucks when you have to toughen up for the system as a system toughens you up. So, yeah. So on the heels of that, on the heels of Mr. Soros that I was supporting, and then, and I'm saying, thank you, Mr. Soros, <laughs> right? And we're in the economic downturns and all this stuff, right? And the environment is crazy. I'm getting hives. We know that the, the climate change is happening regardless of where you think the catalyst is from. And so then I'm like, well, <laughs> it really sucks when you have to toughen up, when you have to toughen up for the system as the system toughens you up. You see, families have it wrong when they beat their kids to toughen them up. They have it wrong doing that, smacking their kids, trying to get them to perform by using violence and major intimidation. And they're like, oh, I'm toughening my kid up. No, you're turning them into a serial killer because then they're watching all the, all those movies of gore and violence and war and blood and domestic violence and sexual violence. And you're also hitting them at the same time. What do you think is going to happen later on down the road when some chick doesn't, you know, uh, succumb to her boyfriend and girlfriend and he's been taught to go and beat somebody up? Yeah, you just developed a type of um, domestic violence abuser, okay? So there's a way to toughen people up without turning them into serial killers and, uh, and, and, and violent people. So yeah, it really sucks when you have to toughen up the system as the system toughens you up. It really sucks when you have to toughen up for the system as the system toughens you up. There are always, there are always, there are always to strengthen humans without, there's always ways to strengthen humans without destroying them unless they choose to destroy themselves. I know I leave words out because I'm doing talk to text. I don't always go and look over what I read. I'm so sorry. Okay. But that is how the strategic the system is. If you're not strong enough for the new world, you will, at, you will take yourself out voluntarily and you will have pleasure and paradise on your way out the door. And it's happening right now. That is how strategic the system is. If you're not strong enough for the new world, you will take yourself out voluntarily and you will have pleasure and paradise on your way out the door. That's better than what most people get out there in the third world countries. If you're in the first world, you are privileged, but when you take it for granted, you will resist privilege and then you will choose OnlyFans over using your PhD. But see, I get it. When you are a millennial and you're looking at everyone around you dying suddenly or dealing with, you know, um, poverty and economic changes and you're like well what's my phd I, i'm not getting many, many job offers with my phd and you don't really have a vision okay um and you don't really have a vision 
then yeah, you're going to pick the, the most, uh, rewarding, like financially rewarding industry, which is the sex industry. Okay. You will pick the most financially rewarding industry, which, and that's what these girls are doing because they're going to college, paying thousands, thousands of dollars in college. All right. I'm going to just, uh, block. They're paying thousands and thousands of dollars in college to then go and go and fight and compete with the world with people who probably are smarter than them that would be picked over these companies. Com these companies are laying people off left and right. Google's laying off, PayPal's laying off, um, other companies are laying off and they have a PhD. What are they going to do with it? Oh, become, you know, a sex worker getting $4 million. And so if you're in the first world, you are privileged, but when you take it for granted, you'll resist privilege. You'll choose OnlyFans over using your PhD. That's, you know, society has gone to shit when you worship a Stanley cup, two girls in one cup is so appropriate. That's why we're in a great reset. And so I said two girls in one Stanley cup. You can Google that. Okay. How do they prophesize the future? Yeah. When people are worshiping a Stanley cup. Are you serious? And yeah, I, I know I'm so glad my husband, I'm going up to the next thing on my, uh, my timeline, my husband, he, he definitely invested correctly with chopping those two trees down, three trees down in our yard. Yeah. It's going to be hotter because the, the, the ground and the limestone that we're going to be paving our driveway and everything else. And the concrete is going to reflect back up and make things hotter. But what are you going to do? I'd rather have it hotter and deal with more of the climate control than um, have trees fall on my house during these windstorms. So, yeah, right now, uh, California is getting hit by all these atmospheric rivers and tornadoes and all these things. And I'm telling you, I told you, it's going to be bad. It already is bad right now. Weather-wise, the coasts. Like if I was on, if I was in California, well, I'll find a way to get it more inland. But even then, you're subject to mudslides and earthquakes. I'd get out of California. If I was someone in California, I'd get the hell out. But you know how people are. They're like, oh yeah, this is just a fluke. This is only gonna happen once. No, they tell you climate change is happening, and it's happening. Okay, if you're in Florida, I would find a way to get out. I find a way to to get out when you can because oh, but some people can't, and I get it. So you're going to have to figure out and hope you get saved when something else happens and then get relocated by the government if you survive something. But uh, where I'm at, not so bad. I mean, we'll have our own issues, yes, but I would say the issues here where I live in Northeast Ohio pales in comparison when you think about it than other places that are going to be really hit with so much stuff. All right, so that's why I'm okay with the heat, because I'll stay inside and pay for the climate control. I don't want any trees falling on me. And so right now, yeah, California's getting pummeled right now with so much crazy weather. <sighs> so now here we go. This is what I really wanted to focus on, but I wanted to lead up to this. All right, so you know now, I, you know how much I've bagged on the cannabis users, Okay. And yeah, I drink coffee. Remember, I'm a type O, blood type O. I'm not blood type A and B. So blood type A and B is highly energetic because they have all that kinetic energy of all the antigen antibody programming. Well, it's more antigen than antibody. So they're getting, they're getting hit with so much energy. All right. And so I've always been drinking coffee. I never could get onto the pot. Never. Really. I mean, I'd smoked pot here and there, but it always made me feel dumb. I mean, it, it gave me a, like a background high. I never liked the really green pot. It was always the brown, the dirt weed that was in California when I was smoking pot at the time. But the, the real green stuff, oh no. I, I passed out on that shit. I would go to sleep. Because I already have, being a typo, I still have a lot more of substance. I have a lot of antibodies to me, right? So... Pot, the downer, never did shit for me, really. It never, it, 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 it may have been more of a, an aphrodisiac than anything else. But then if you're not into that stuff anymore, and you're like not seeing the, 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 uh, the necessity of being so highly sexualized, and you calm down those hormones, pot doesn't do shit for me. If that was really what it was for, was to be an aphrodisiac, pot is like, there's no reason for me to do pot. 
But I can understand those with the negatives in their body, the Rh negatives and the A's and B's, blood type A's and B's, positive or negative. When you're firing on all billions of cylinders on a constant basis, yeah, you don't need any amphetamines. You don't, and this environment is really aggressive to those who are blood type A and B and negative. And so the pot is the downer. So you can only imagine with all of the, the, the drug experimentation, why the opium wars were such what it is, because people were speeding them up. They were, they were getting sped up by the environment, by the different drugs, by all the different things that people were doing, the kings and queens and the doctors and way back when. We're doing experiments on people, the sanitariums. You know, we had sanitariums here in Ohio uh, in California and people are getting electroshock therapy. They were getting things under them to see what energy does to the brain. And then of course, then all the experiments of the biotech. And then, you know, then all the mass campaigns, the public health therapies. Okay. Causes antigen antibody programming. And so I'm like all of you who are heavy pot smokers, you are trying to slow down the very fast, extraordinary brain because you failed to release those demons. Why do you think there are pot smokers on such a level? Because their brain is working so fast. And that, and that makes sense because now that I look back on the different people that are heavily pot smokers, I can only imagine what their blood type is. A lot of them are skinny. Because their brain is working so fast, it's sucking the life out of them. And they have to find a way to slow down their brain because it'll cause anxiety and them jumping out of their skin. I understand because I can, in this environment, I can feel it even being a blood type O. And I don't even need the pot. And I drink coffee to help me, you know, wake up my sluggish immune system. It's not really sluggish, but it helps me wake up. But sometimes I don't even need coffee because the environment is that accelerated. That ionic, that caffeinated, that stimulated. America, the last greatest experiment, full of extraordinary smart human beings, so over innovated they tip to the other side that sometimes causes the aggressive autism too lopsided in the intelligence. Or somewhere on the spectrum called neurodivergent or ADD or ADHD. So there are people out there that are fancying themselves and call themselves neurodivergent. And they're very smart. Some are activists, okay? And so you hold so much kinetic activity causing so much connections and energy, and then you have to find a way to release those demons so they're not playing so much pinball, breaking down your vital organs, using up your lifelines faster, okay? And so that's the thing is when you have so much kinetic activity, such as those microbes, those little energetic Ricochet rabbit, you know, Speedy Gonzalez microbes that replicate daily and are in constant war with you as the host. That's why you get then all the different triggers when people are triggered. And that's when you get trying to keep up with the energy in your body that that's why the lifelines are being used up faster. But in a slower frequency environment, those who have the type blood type A and B and all that kinetic energy, okay, ADD, ADHD, whatever, in a slower frequency environment, maybe they, if they channeled that, that energy through the maths and the sciences and the English and history and all that stuff, they can develop some pretty amazing things like Facebook, like um, Microsoft and all that, and like Apple, okay? And so that's why people like, Einstein was such a genius. People like um, Steve Jobs, a genius. People like Bill Gates, a genius. Look how skinny Steve Jobs was even before he started dying from his autoimmune disorders. Look how skinny Bill Gates is. Because his brain was able to work so extraordinarily fast because of the kinetic energy. And I don't know what his blood type is, but I can venture to say he's probably blood type A or B. And they're trying to now, within this environment, blood type A's and B's are going to have a hard time surviving because the environment is accelerating that uh, the kinetic energy. And then people have to then take the drugs. And so you can imagine how many Americans are blood type A and B, and even type O, that have 
been nurtured into into uh, food mitigation diets that have a lot of cancer disease and chronic illness that are trying to s just feel some kind of pleasure because they're in pain as the body's trying to push out demons. It's like almost everyone is, is suffering in America and in the West because we're so overly innovated. <laughs> okay? And so I was raised differently because I didn't have the type of program that others had in Silicon Valley or even in my family. Believe me, I know I was very different than most of my classmates, even in my family, very different. And so I wasn't prone to drug use. I did drugs occasionally, pot and alcohol, but I never really became so addicted. Now, cigarettes was something I smoked when I was 16 or 17, 18, 19. It was Newports because I was around a lot more African-Americans at the time because that's who was in the system at the time, the juvenile system and all that. So I was I smoking Newports and switched to Marlboros and then it was on and off. And I quit for many years and go on and off, on and off. And then within the last 10 years, I think I smoked cigarettes um, around my husband in the beginning. We weren't husband and wife at the time. And then, um, and then with all the stresses that were going on, cigarettes was the thing was the go-to for me. And then I got off the cigarettes the last few years. I finally released that demon. Okay. So that was probably the, the addiction that I justified the most that stuck with me the most, but I never saw, I think cigarettes are a stimulant. That's the reason why. And since I'm a blood type A or I'm sorry, blood type O, it makes sense why cigarettes would be necessary for those who are blood type O's because it's a stimulant, just like coffee is a stimulant. Okay. And so anyways, um, so I think cigarettes is probably the only thing I think I turned to on and off during hard times because I didn't have half the intelligence that was out there. I was competing against. I developed my intelligence and intellectual capability way later on in life when everyone else received it way early on in life. Okay, so you can call me a late bloomer. I think some potential future employer way back when, when I was trying to, I don't know, give my, do my resume stuff and, and in the interview and I just, it's probably PMS at the time, I just flubbed that interview and he was just like, are you a late bloomer? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what I am, which is why I'm able to make these connections now at an older age after I release the demons. And have 50 years of life experience behind me. Exposed to so much diversity in different social economic areas and thought processes. Flitting from circle to circle. Picking up knowledge everywhere I go. That's why the system legalized cannabis, right? Many people have been highly innovated, extremely innovated. And they're being tortured by the aggressive intelligence in their brains. It's not your fault. Okay, you were part of one mass major experimentation way back before your grandparents. And you inherited their demons. Okay, and so intelligent people and mental illness. However, intelligence has drawbacks. Okay? How did I come upon this? Because I Googled, do intelligent people have, I don't, I don't know, I think I said the intelligent people have, you know, mental disorders or something. And so intelligence has drawbacks. For example, studies have found that a higher IQ associated with more earlier drug use. Studies have found, have also found that higher IQ is associated with more mental illness, including depression, anxiety, and bipolar disorder. Some of you are so fucking intelligent, you self-medicate. What if you can keep your high intelligence and your body, mind, and spirit? You don't have to die from being so fucking smart. Einstein had this issue, and he was a genius. I think he was blood type B. I have, yeah, he was a blood type B. He never achieved his goal, and I don't even know what that was. I haven't studied him too in depth in that area. And he was eventually institutionalized for most of his life, diagnosed as suffering from schizophrenia. Now, I heard that he'd had social issues that some of his peers didn't even like him because he would, he would pop off or become unpredictable or even a little bit violent. Einstein very likely was afflicted with Asperger's syndrome. Asperger's is now listed as part of the autistic spectrum disorder. Okay, so remember the system needed the resources to develop an advanced society and you were all the resources they needed. So you know how much mass experimentation was done. Some people didn't even know that. that okay, so you, you come from a long line of people and if you go and trace back, and that's a lot of people to trace back to, you know, when you look at the whole world as a population, 
But the system can see everyone who's part of the medical system. They can see where you came from. They can see all the diseases you have. And some of them will know that some people will get autism because you're so overstimulated, so overly innovated that it tipped the scales. Sometimes it turns into Down syndrome. Sometimes it turns into other issues that then causes the, some parts of the body to overachieve, overdevelop. And when you have any one part of your system overachieving and overdeveloping, it then puts other things in the system at, at, at a deficit, and that's why you get lopsided intelligence or parts of your body that are that are more influential than other parts, okay? And so remember, the system needed the resources to develop an advanced society, and you were all the resources they needed. Nothing is organic, okay? So I just dispense with that whole thing. is oh, we got to do organic. And your fingers are organic. When you pull out the crap out of your body, that's organic. Don't be sticking things in your body. Cough, sneeze, blow your nose, that's organic. All right, take a shower. Some of you, some of you potheads are so extraordinarily smart that you could be your own love guru. Have a following and get lost in that power and persuasion, no different than Jim Jones. I see that. There's this guy, I'm not going to say who he is, he's on my Facebook and, and he is, you know, a musician, he's DJ type dude and he's all about love. Oh my God, you see the love just dripping from his face his words, his whole persona, and he has a girl that is so in love with him, like so in love. And he's like, you know, watch out for those that rely on power and authority, not love. When when people who are in authority don't love their people, then you better watch out for them. And he claims that he loves everyone. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of, that reminds me of those cult leaders way back in the 1960s that love their members. Some of these yogis that were sexually abusing their members of that cult go 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 to go to netflix and watch all those different 1960s cult leaders some of them were yogis and swamis others were like a jim jones others like a charles manson that's how extreme it can get be careful trying to get a following where everything's about love and anti-authority then you turn into the very thing you are resisting that's the danger of extreme innovation. It can turn deadly. The 1960s was testing every single person who went through highly aggressive innovation. Some became a David Koresh, Branch Davidian. Others, Charles Manson or serial killers, John Wayne Gacy, Kaczynski. Uh, who else? Ted Bundy. Right? You know, he, wasn't, he part, wasn't he like, you know, some respectable dude that looked like he was part of the upper class academic lawyer whatever right others became jim jones or love gurus or yogis or exercise enthusiasts even in the sciences now watch your influencers today doing the same thing over again sex pleasure paradise and trying to beat the system again what if you can keep all that intelligence and intellectual capability and the great memories and release those demons and live to tell about it and then you don't have to be addicted to cigarettes, alcohol, or drugs, or even marijuana to get by. What if food, rest, release was the only answer to life, and he didn't have to turn to things to make you feel good all the time? Who's he? And you didn't have to turn to things to make you feel good all the time. Sometimes talk to text turns into you, turns into he. It's too late for many people, so you don't ask them to get off their addictions if they're not ready to. For many people, it is too late. Other people, it's not too late. Okay, so if you're going to quit an addiction, you better have an aggressively strong support system. Because if you're trying to quit cigarettes and you have to work and you have to deal with things and you have other things that are going on, diagnosable conditions, if you quit cigarettes, alcohol or drugs, quitting, I mean, transitioning is one thing, but how are you going to support that transition without destroying yourself? Anything cold turkey, getting on something cold turkey, or going off something cold turkey is, could be deadly. Okay? And so it is too late for many people. So I don't ask them to get off their addictions if they're not ready to. For many people, it is too late. Other people, it's not too late. I don't want to punish those with no information because other people can't handle this information. You got to be able to be tolerant that maybe my info is not for you. But other people have a chance. It may not be too late for them. And so I said, everyone deserves to consider another arm of the Hydra. Okay? 
And then I also, about <laughs> the opium wars. So then I figured out, oh shit, overstimulation, overcyclization runs your clock down. So now you're seeing with the porn industry, you saw what Hugh Hefner put out there and all these guys are like, oh, I couldn't wait to go hang out in the, in the Playboy Mansion. Then you hear the stories after the fact when he dies, all the Playboy bunnies suffering under all that kind of sexualization. But they chose to be in it, yes, and they made money off of it. And they were put in positions that they probably were like, oh my God. But hey, you know, the fame, the fortune, the glory, the TV shows, the books, you know, all that. It was worth it to them to, to exploit themselves. And some are suffering. And they look back at what they participated in. And now they're like trying to save face. And I don't blame them. It's like when you did stupid shit as a teenager. And, you, and I'm glad as a Gen X there was nothing out there recording everything that I did. Though <laughs> some things were recorded through the juvenile system. But whatever. But yeah, some people are looking back at what they did when they were under a different type of, you know, thought process. And they're like, holy crap, I'm so ashamed. I don't know if they're saying that. Now they're just saying it. it's all his fault. <laughs> and so all cancer disease and chronic illness and autoimmune disorders and neurological conditions and even autism comes from overstimulation of the brain. And then people self-medicate to slow it down after so many years of speeding up their brain to keep up with everybody else. That overstimulation was the innovation that was forced on you, which is why reefer madness was huge in the 1930s. The sanitariums were full of people overstimulated, people needing to get high and chill out, which also explains why opium dens were prolific way back when. I've watched movies where they were talking about pro, you know, opium dens and the whole thing about it, and it was part of a larger story, but opium dens were huge because people were so overly stimulated. So the first opium war was 1839 to 42 was fought between China and Great Britain and the second opium war 1856 to 60 so then you have the the slaves right also known as the era war on the anglo-french war in china was fought by great britain and france against china read more about the is it the qing dynasty qing dynasty qing <laughs> i should google how to pronounce that because they had too much energy zapping their brains. Some had electroshock therapy. Now people take that energy in a pill called highly caffeinated everything. I've heard about this highly caffeinated coffee called Death Wish. And I'm like, what? Highly caffeinated coffee called Death Wish? That right there is telling you that it is going to overstimulate and use up your lifelines faster, age you faster. But people are trying to keep up. To make the money. But for what? To die? A race to the bottom? Even this environment is highly caffeinated. It's ionic. Then came Louis Armstrong and the Jazz Age. And then all the, you know, and then the other yeah, Reefer Madness, the Jazz Age, and, the, you know, the, 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 um, the 1950s, right? And you had, what is it, um, Sinatra and the Mafias. And all that, hot women, hot men, and aggressive sexuality, and all types of orientations. Then you had the sexual revolution, and the civil rights, and women's rights in the 1960s and 70s. Then you had the Gen X babies deal with more overstimulation or understimulation, nature and nurture, than all the experimentation. Then you have all the, then you had, then you look at Silicon Valley and what they produced. The, the tech world, the journalists out there, hot girls, hot boys, single moms, all the porn stuff. All the gurus, the love gurus, all the, the herbalists. All, I'll tell you, man, you see now. So you look at Silicon Valley and then you look at Middle America, right? Middle America mimicry and they're trying to copy Silicon Valley. And you still have the single moms. You still have all the love gurus. You still have all the, 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 the things that, that, that people do trying to go back to the 1960s. The pleasure in paradise, right? And so I bet you, I bet you certain vaccines have had the innovation people needed to program them plus the nurture because of their blood types. And then, like I said, when people are overly innovated, the therapies have or had the opposite effect on the next generation, which is also why you see more variants in the population, right? The family and why there are families of vaccines because of the offspring. That's why you can't treat disease because you'll compound the issue. But if people are suffering so much, it's a catch 22. As far as all the neurological diseases, so many factors contribute to the outcomes because of the therapies. I mean, all therapies and remedies, even the supplements market. 
are factors in overstimulation of the brain, body, and spirit. So then the whole Chris Watts thing and then Shanann Watts selling Thrive, which is basically an overstimulant, causing people to work faster, even though it's approved by the FDA as relatively safe, it's speeding up people's immune systems. But they market it through all the vitamins. Well, vitamins are no different. They're hormones. Vitamins are hormone replacement therapy. When you're taking vitamins through supplements, through drinks, through even highly caffeinated drinks, like Death Wish, this is not, this is just Starbucks. And I don't, I only drink like one cup of this. But then, then, then people turn to these overstimulants and their brain already has issues. And they're going one tunnel and then what, they're going down this tunnel vision, right? And then what happens with Chris Watts? He annihilates his family. And they're all heavily on those supplements. So when people are heavily stimulated by these supplements, by these speed them up caffeinated drinks and patches, it fucks with the brain. It literally fucks with the brain and it deteriorates a person faster. And then you see them on Facebook so glorifying what they're selling because you see what they're saying. It makes you feel good. You're doing things faster. And I'm like, oh my God, when you read what that person is saying about the supplements that they're taking because they have cancer disease, chronic illness, and autoimmune disorders, and everything else, and they have such a fast immune system, and or are so slow that they're trying to speed themselves up to keep up with everyone else, and you see what they're writing, you're like, I'm looking at, I am reading what a drug addict is saying about their drug and what it's doing to them. And then I look at then what Shanann Watts and what Chris Watts was doing. They're trying to keep up with everybody else. She's on every single day exploiting her child, children, He's trying to keep up. They have, they had three kids or one on the way. Okay. And then he didn't want that life and he annihilated his whole family. But she was on every single day with the Thrive stuff. Every single day. Overstimulated. And the kids had food allergies. The kids had nut allergies. That's basically most of America. Allergic, food intolerant, overstimulated, over innovated, suffering, predatory, radicalized. Holy shit. So they have to speed up the atmosphere to then go through these lives faster. So people are then just supernova and they do it by their own choice if they don't, if they choose to do that. They choose to keep speeding up their body and trying to treat all their diseases in such an aggressive way that they can't. It, that's what the system does, what it does. So as far as all the neurological diseases, so many factors contribute to the outcomes because of the therapies. I mean, all therapies and remedies, even the supplements market are factors in overstimulation of the brain, body, and spirit. People have to have everything speed up and give them energy because of so many factors. And of course, the high and feeling good. Everyone wants, everyone wants an edge over somebody else. I mean, everyone, which means, which is why they do what they do, which is why they claim they have the latest and greatest, whatever, why they're selling you everything under the sun. Just like me, I'm trying to help people, right? So I'm selling you time to slow down and gain some lifelines while others are doing the opposite, trying to sell you, feel great, feel great, even if you use so many lifelines and you may not afford, can afford to lose so many lifelines, but hey, it feels great to lose lifelines, right? It doesn't feel so good to gain lifelines because you then have to release some lifelines that are working against you so you can gain the lifeline working for you. And I don't know how you're going to figure that out because some people are too far gone, so you can't really help them, right? So what do you think? overstimulation does to your brain and your neurological system when you keep tampering with your hormones and cause them to pump out more energy more than what it usually does. And then the faucet keeps running, draining the person of their life force, all for pleasure and paradise and feeling good, which is why your society is so over-sexualized. In this environment, environment, with that mentality, people are running their clocks down, using up pretty much all their lifelines within the next decade. That's why I say stay home, stay safe, eat food, release the demons, because even now, I am highly, highly energized. And I just had, I mean, this is just a cup of, I even drank the whole cup. Co co this, <laughs> I still have some left. This is just half a cup of coffee here. Okay? But I'll tell you, this environment, this environment has sped up. It's like being given a million dollars. And when you're given this energy, 
to process information faster, to figure out how to slow shit down so you're not using up your lifelines, that's the gift that keeps on giving. That's a good gift because you're using your brain faster to slow shit down so you don't supernova. But apparently people are using their brain faster to speed everything up and then they supernova and they have fast moving cancers. They die suddenly or they make bad choices because their brain isn't working correctly because of the overstimulation. And of course the drugs trying to slow it down has then caused the conflict of, of competing forces. That's why we're in a great reset because how do you help people who are in those realities that don't even see that that reality is destroying them? I don't know, but I had to look at the other side of it. So, you know, so, you know, I even had trouble, not trouble, but I had to go from being so judgmental on one side, completely bagging on the cannabis users to now understanding why, why cannabis users are what they are. John was a, an, was, was a, was an example because he, you know, he got off the cannabis, he says, and he's a drug, a drug, he's a blood type B. Okay. He's not on my Facebook anymore because he's going a different direction and more power to him. Other people I know that are different blood types than me are heavy cannabis users, people with neurological issues or attention deficit or ADD, maybe skinny. Yes. Cannabis users. It's self-medicating. It's trying to balance out the hormones because you have to be able to release those demons. And if you don't, you will self-medicate yourself until you use your last lifeline. So now you see, so now I can legit take Switzerland. Now I can be neutral. I understand why you guys are drug addicts and need to be, and I get it. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know how you'll ever, I don't know how you'll figure it out. You'll figure it out or you won't. I, and it's not for me to say anymore. And so now the system is saying hurricanes are now so strong. Scientists want to introduce category six storms. Oh yeah. Welcome to the new world. Here we go. When you have, when you have, um, San Diego under a tornado watch or tornado warning, <laughs> San Diego, California, tornadoes. And so orbs. So last night, last night I had to, I was hearing noise around the house and I saw an orb yesterday in one of my videos. I did two videos yesterday because I got interrupted and I saw that orb and I'm just like, okay. And I'm hearing noises last night and I'm seeing things like in the darkness of my doorway that leads into the hallway to the bathroom, which is downstairs. And I'm just seeing shit. And I'm like, you know what? I need to close the fucking door. So I closed the door last night. I did it the night before. All the energy was pretty even. And then with with the with, with the with with whatever is going on in the atmosphere, orbs today, portals open. And when portals are open, the dead and the living are kind of interacting with each other on some level. And, and some are strong, but not so strong. Like I'm waiting for them to open my door one day, but it won't happen. But I'm very, very influential. So in my house, I will blow away any energy because they're dead. When you're dead, you don't have the energy that I have when you're, when you're trying to haunt me, but I will, I notice a presence. I could feel it. I could almost see it on some level, but I'm able to still sleep. I'm not so scared. Like, I remember a couple of years ago, I'd be so scared. <laughs> and I remember being in places where the spirituality is so aggressive that I even felt it. I had to go outside because the inside was really aggressive. And it's a feeling that you cannot pinpoint that you cannot really, it's, it's a feeling that you know, and, and you can say, like, Oh, it's your mental illness, your anxiety. Well, I'll tell you this environment, the last couple of days with the hives, that was probably a portals opening as is releasing those demons. That little orb of energy yesterday, that look, it was going slowly too. It wasn't even fast. It was slow. Oh, I was like, what the hell? Yeah, that thing was attracted to whatever was going on. And, and, and I'm sure I'll, I'll hear, I hear things and stuff, but, but also the temperature is dropping too. So the house settling, you can, you can debunk that if you want to with house settling. But, um, yeah, 
just wait till this <laughs> it's already here yeah I, I I don't even know what it's like to feel normal anymore like what it was like to feel a couple of years ago this last birthday was totally different than the last birthday this last few months has been so different than a couple of years ago so I hope you guys figured out I, ho I hope you guys survive this I don't know I just want to give you my sort my side of it but I understand now why cannabis users are what they are I understand I doesn't mean I want to go and, and do it and hang out with people because right now people are self-medicating and they're self-medicating together. And I completely understand that. And when you understand that's what people have to do, then you don't feel as bad not wanting to join them because you're not, I'm not needing to self-medicate. I enjoy my own company. I enjoy learning. I enjoy understanding the world that I live in. I enjoy figuring out how to keep improving my written skills, my writing skills, my speaking skills, how to keep moving forward and accepting every challenge that comes my way. And sometimes I have to say no, no, no challenges today. Okay. So anyways, that's it. You guys have a good day. I don't know what else to talk about later. Who knows? We'll see. I'm not even going to say, well, that's it. Cause there's not, it's not always a bit that we have seven years of this shit and I'm still have to figure out how to write this. <laughs> there's just so much. All right. Bye.